Hey guys, how's it going? What's up? We're back with a podcast episode. This is very um, experimental, you know? I would definitely, I say this on like every fucking, oh yeah, let's cuss on this channel because I really wanted to make it an effort to not cuss on my main channel. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's good to kind of like let people know what they're getting into, you know? Like, I can just, you know, on, on my main channel, I don't cuss. Or if I do, it's like very, very minimal or it's just like damn or something. And then my second channel, why am I even talking about this? I don't even know. Um, but anyways, moral of the story, I guess I'm going to cuss here, I guess, because why not? But why did I get here? Oh yeah, every piece of content that I post like anywhere, I'm always like, let me know what you think, you know? Um, I don't just say that, I actually mean that. Um, even if you don't like something, I mean, don't worry that like I'm so sensitive that if one person says they don't like something, I will never do it again. But, you know, if you really don't like something about the content that I'm creating don't feel bad about telling me unless it's like in a mean way like if I asked for criticism like please actually tell me if you don't like something in a nice way because then I'll know like if a significant amount of people say they don't like the same thing then like okay I should probably not do that thing um but anyways yeah I would love feedback on these podcast episodes uh, what do you guys want to see? What do you guys not want to see? And so on. How is like the quality of the video and the audio? I'm recording the video in, oh yeah, if you're listening to it on something else, there is video. Um, just so you know, it'll be on my YouTube channel, po uh, podcast YouTube channel, which will be linked on my main channel. I'll also link it on each of the podcast websites, po po probably. But yeah, welcome back to this podcast. I'm here <laughs> this episode I'm gonna talk about my Halloween playlist because I think that would be fun and you know that's what this podcast is gonna be about whatever I would think would be fun to talk about and you guys with your level of engagement and amount of likes um versus views through all those um statistics can let me know if you also thought it was fun to listen to um So, yeah, just so everyone knows, I have posted a Halloween playlist every year, I feel like, for the past, I don't know, I have no idea, it could be three years, it could be five years, I don't know, I just feel like I'm always making a Halloween playlist every year for myself, like, for my own benefit, I also make Christmas playlists, but that's not something as I'm as, like, passionate about, but, um, I just think it's fun to make playlists, um, especially for holidays. I think holiday music is like fun and funny and interesting. Um, so I've been posting my Halloween playlists like on my Instagram story because people seem to like them. I don't know if they actually like them once they click on the link and actually s listen to the playlist, but um, I don't know. They get some clicks and they get some people save them, I guess. So some somebody must like the playlist. Anyways, enough wasting your goddamn time let's talk about this playlist i thought it'd be fun to like dissect it somewhat and like discuss you know the different songs that are in here but yeah so if you're not watching the video if you're listening to this on like spotify or whatever on the youtube version of this podcast episode i'm gonna have like of my phone screen recording on the side so that you can kind of see like the album art um and stuff for the songs that i'm talking about this is my halloweeny playlist 2021 um version the year that i got into k-pop so there's a few k-pop editions oh yeah and also it's pretty much the same playlist every year like mostly i just kind of like take off the songs that started to annoy me um or that I don't feel like fit the vibe that I'm going for as much anymore and then I also add like more songs that I discovered that year or like songs from new artists that I've discovered that year or that people have recommended me so also in the comments of this video 
feel free to let me know any other like spooky songs that you think I should consider adding. And I'll also have some honorable mentions at the end that I will talk about that are things that I like kind of wanted to add, but for whatever reason, I feel like I shouldn't. So anyways, if anyone cares, the album art is from Over the Garden Wall, which I really would recommend everybody to watch. I feel like I talk about it every year, but it's an animated series that was on Cartoon Network years ago, um, but like a mini series. So like all the episodes together, if you watch them all in one sitting, is about like two hours long. So it feels like a little movie, you know? Um, It's really cute and funny. It's like you know, family-friendly kids show, but the humor is still, like, funny for adults, too, and it's got, like, it's kind of a musical. Anyways, okay, let's get into this shit. Just a fair warning, um, well, first of all, let's talk about it is four and a half hours long, so I feel like that's pretty decent length, you know, a party length, (laughs) perhaps, I don't know. No, but, um, I did kind of want to make it, like, appropriate somewhat to be able to play like when you have people over like I tried to keep the songs like not too uh I don't know like song there's a lot of songs that I like wanted to put on the Halloween playlist every year because like they sound really spooky or like the theme of them is very spooky like dark and it just I I just feel like it's a perfect like Halloweeny song for the spooky vibes but there's too much like emptiness in it if that makes sense like okay for example an honorable mention that I was going to talk about later but I will mention it now it's called my body is a cage isn't it by arcade mm, arcade fire is that what they're called you might recognize it from euphoria but it's a really cool song and I feel like it has like good like spooky vibes But it's just, like, it takes a long time to, like, get started. I feel like there's too much, like, emptiness in the beginning of it. And so I feel like if you were playing it to, like, create a fun Halloween-y vibe, if you're playing the playlist to create a fun, like, Halloween-y vibe in the background of, like, a hangout session with your friends, then, like, that song might feel a little bit, like, awkward. I don't know. I, like, think about things way too much, if you can't tell. Anyways, this playlist, fair warning, is basically um, Kim Petras music featuring other artists. <laughs> Kim Petras is a pop star who I love, and she has like a, I don't know if she officially titled it a Halloween uh, album, but it's called Turn Off the Light, if you want to check it out, and I mean, the album art is, like, spooky, and yeah, the song titles, Purgatory, There Will Be Blood, Bloody Valentine, Wrong Turn, Demons, Massacre. So, you get the general vibe, um, (laughs) but I added, like, almost every song to the playlist because I love them. I love the general vibe of it. It's, like, Halloween, but, like, party techno dance music, you know? It's just good fun. Good Halloween fun but anyways let's get back into the playlist so the first song uh does the order matter not really let's be honest i like kind of put it in an order just so it's like somewhat mm, spaced out if you do play it in order but i just shuffle it personally um anyways first song we got wrong turn by kim petras i'm not gonna play the songs because i definitely would get copywritten but i'm just gonna describe them to you wrong turn by kim petras I don't know what to say about it. I just said it's a Halloween album. It's all amazing. You should listen to it. Um, If you don't listen to my playlist, just listen to her album. (laughs) I hope this podcast episode is interesting. Okay, let's like give me, cut me some slack because I have not recorded like a podcast episode type thing in a long time. So um, we're just jumping right back into it, you know? Okay, next song, Evil Eye by Franz Ferdinand. You guys know Franz Ferdinand. Um, They did that one song. What's it called? Take me out. I say, don't you know? You say, you don't know. I say, take me out. You know, everybody knows that song. They're the guys that did that song. Um, 
but they have an album i didn't listen to the whole album but i've heard like a few songs on it and it just has like a halloweeny vibe evil eye especially but there's another song on this playlist by them from the same album um like a classic halloween vibe like rock do you know what i mean like there's a genre that's just like Halloween rock <laughs> and it's fun and it's fun. Where's the other song? Oh my God. Well, we'll get to it. But anyways, they both have like that perfect vibe. I feel like, and yeah, love it. It's called evil eye also. So, oh yeah, I should say like, me creating this playlist, my mindset is like, okay, some of the songs are very obviously like Halloween songs, you know, like I have freaking Monster Mash on here or like Thriller or whatever, where they're like, the sound of it is Halloweeny, the lyrics are spooky, you know, the concept of it in general is just like a Halloweeny type concept, you know. Then there's other songs on here that like, maybe the lyrics aren't that spooky or Halloweeny or whatever, but the music, like the sound of it is, you know, or vice versa. Maybe the sound of it isn't like super Halloween-y sounding, but what they're singing about is, you know what I mean? So there's like a mix of that. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> like, I hope this is interesting, okay? But anyways, moving on. Next song, Monster Mash. I literally just said that, you know, I love the Monster Mash. <laughs> I but I I wondered if I should put like a different version of it on the playlist because some the song like I feel this is like nitpicky but like the sound effects in the song that are in like the beginning and the end I feel like they go on for too long in the end of the song. There's like bubbles. <laughs> There's literal bubbles sound effects um and also like chains and stuff. And it's like cute and fun, you know, cute and fun and fresh. It's a little too old sounding, you know, um, and it goes on a little too long. But anyways, Monster Mash, a classic. Did you know it's by Bobby Boris Pickett and the Crypt Kickers? I, Cause I didn't. So, Monster Mash, next song, Purge the Poison by Marina. Um, I guess she converted from Marina Marina and the Diamonds. Was that was it was that what she was called? Marina and the Diamonds or Marina Diamondist or something? What? Am I pulling these out of nowhere? Her latest album. Is it her latest album? I think so. Yeah, 2021. Um her latest album is so like witches in hollywood retro hollywood it's like witches living in retro hollywood i don't know like that's the vibe that i get from it um it's just like i haven't listened to the whole album but i've listened to like several songs on it and i feel like they all have like just this fun like i don't know retro hollywood witchy vibe does that make sense to you guys it makes sense to me um, but I feel like this song is called Purge the Poison, so the lyrics feel Halloween-y a bit, you know? Like, enough, I would say. I don't know if it's this song or another song that I added to this playlist, but she literally does say, like, all my friends are witches, we live in Hollywood, or something like that. And I was, I heard that line and I was like, oh my god, that's exactly the vibe that I'm getting from this album. Um, it's good fun you know i guess it's like a lot of minor notes to me like when songs have like a lot of minors i'm no music person but you know minor versus major they sound more like eerie or dark sounding um feels more halloweeny to me anyways moving on hungry like the wolf 2009 remastered version by duran duran I recommend everyone to not watch the music video music video for this song. I have like a special connection to this song. First of all, it's a banger, but mostly because of nostalgia over the movie Big Fat Liar from whatever year it was from that I don't I could not tell you, but 
Um, I had that movie on VHS as a child and I watched it so many times. I love it so much. Um, I should watch it again now. Um, I ha- it's my, my, lo- my most liked review on Letterboxd, which I never review on anymore. Sorry to anyone who followed me on there. Uh, my most liked review on Letterboxd is just me quoting this movie, the part where um, Alex Wolf, Alex Wolf, <laughs> Alex Wolf. That's one of the Naked Brother Band boys. Alex Wolf and Nat Wolf. Oh my God, the guy in the movie is called Marty Wolf. Anyways, when Marty Wolf uh, gets his car towed because the children fucked it up. If you haven't seen that movie, you're going to be like, what? Um, when they dye a man blue and they fuck up his car and he has to get his car towed. Um, and the guy picks him up, the, the, the tow car guy, the car towing guy picks him up and is like, they told me to pick up a little blue car. They didn't say anything about a little blue man. <laughs> and the delivery of the line is just immaculate. He looks like he was so excited to deliver that line. And that's the like only line that that guy gets in the whole movie. Like he's only in it for like a minute. Um but it's just so iconic. I think about it so often. Um it makes me so happy. Anyways, that's way too much time to be spending on this one song, but uh, imagine that. I'm not even done yet um hungry like the wolf yeah don't watch the music video i would as i was just explaining i have a lot of nostalgia for this song and it's just a fucking banger dude and my explanation for it being halloweeny um it's clearly about a man transforming into a werewolf and he doesn't realize it yet you know he's feeling all these like werewolfy like urges and stuff but he doesn't know that he's they don't he doesn't know that they're werewolf urges he thinks it's just like masculinity taking over or something like that but anyways yeah what was it oh yeah the music video it's just like it feels racist to me um i try to i forget but i i try not to watch music videos for like old songs you know because i will probably be disappointed in them but anyways yeah uh it's just cringe and feels racist to me but anyways moving on (laughs) purgatory by kim petras the kim petras album that i was just talking about like some of the songs are regular songs with singing and lyrics you know and then some songs are just like instrumental like halloween dance techno um and the whole thing is fun but i tried to not put every single song from the album on my playlist So I left out some of the songs that were more just instrumental. So yeah, but this is one that I really like. It's pretty much just instrumental, I think, but it's like one of my more favorite of the instrumental songs. So I put it on here and yeah, anyways, Final Girl. Dude, this song, musical genius right here. Final Girl by Graveyard Guy and Slater. Um, I only know the two songs by graveyard guy that are in this playlist this song just like came up as a suggested song when i made a halloween playlist before and the lyrics oh my god i should like look them up and actually like read them right now um i'm gonna read the lyrics i'm gonna give you a lyrical reading right now because it's way too iconic oh and if you don't know final girl is like what they call like a girl who stays alive she makes it through the whole horror movie alive you know um i don't know why it's final girl i guess because like girls are typically like the girliest of girls are usually the ones that die first you know because they're like weak or whatever and stupid um and so final girls are like interesting i guess because they're breaking that like stereotype for horror movies Anyways, okay, Graveyard Guy opens the song by saying, Grave, yard, guy. And then he says, Yeah, I've been calling all night. I know you're home alone. I hear the fear in your voice as you pick up the phone. And I've got eyes on you now. I like the way you breathe. 
but I'm more interested in the ways to make you scream. Got a real fun game I know you'll like. It's where you run from me and try to hide. And if you don't play right, I'll, I think I might just find a real nice place. <laughs> I'm reading this so poorly. I'm trying to not sing it, but that's hard. So I'm like weirdly talking. Okay. If you don't play right, I think I might just find a real nice place to put my knife. And when you fight back, you're such a tease. How many hits it make, takes to make you bleed? Make me bleed. What? Okay. And if you play this right, you won't go first because you're the last to cut the final girl. I keep on calling you, babe. Why won't you answer me? There's just one thing that I want. Your blood all over me. I'll break the door and make my way in. I'm the killer. You're the victim. When you scream, it drives me nuts. If you hang up, I'll spill your guts. Um, I hear you breathing, baby. Been chasing you all night. Think it'd be fun to see if you make it through the night. Now you're screaming, baby. Car. Anyways, and then... Do you want to be the final girl? Do you, do you want to be the final girl? Blah, blah, blah. And then Slater comes in. Um, hot, blonde, big tit, school girl, lipstick, virgin whore, innocent. <laughs> if my neighbors can hear me through the window, um, I'm sorry. But, you know, she's like going through all the stereotypes of like girls in like horror movies or whatever. Um... The cheerleader who babysits at home. I'm alone. Strangers call me on the phone. Lights go out. You cut the line. I'm the perfect sacrifice. Yeah, okay. Well, here's the twist. I'm a stone cold cunt. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, here's the twist. I'm a stone cold cunt. Why is it so hard for me to say? A killer bitch. And I'll break your heart. I'll make you sick. And I'll rip you apart from limb to limb. You'll learn right now. I don't play nice. And if you hurt me once, I'll kill you twice. And I won't go first, Drew Barrymore, because I'm the last bitch up, the final girl. Okay, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but you get the vibe. They're like acting out a whole horror movie right before your eyes. It's iconic. Um, so anyways, I hope everyone listens to that song, if anything, because um, it's musical genius, like I said. And then next, the Goosebumps theme. You know, I was not really a Goosebumps child, but, um, I have to admit the theme is very iconic. Um, I just think of that video of that girl with the glasses and the piano also, um, just art, just, just pure art. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about this. Also, I feel like I should probably like calm down discussing things so heavily, or maybe I shouldn't because I need to monetize this channel. So I need to get more watch hours so maybe I should just make this episode two hours long. Um, anyways, yeah, you got, I got some theme songs in here because you kind of have to, but I tried to leave it to just the theme songs that again, like aren't too, aren't too theme songy, like aren't too score ish, uh, to where it's not awkward to like play them while you're hanging out with people or like having a little Halloween get together party, whatever. Um, Zombie by Purple Kiss, the first K pop inclusion that we've talked about so far. Um, Purple Kiss is a new K pop group. They're really cute. They only have like a few songs out so far, like songs with like music videos and performances and everything. But I really like them so far. Um, I thought this song is really cute and fun and like the dance for it and music video was all like cute um, and fun, whatever. It's not super like Halloween-y. It's not super spooky, but they do talk about, they, they, they say zombie a lot, okay? So I wanted to include it, but I haven't like looked at the actual lyrics translated to English yet, so I don't really know exactly what they're talking about in relation to zombies. Um, I should probably look into that, but yeah, it's just a cute and fun song. If you're bored, you should watch their little music video for it. It's got a lot of cute outfits and like they do a few little zombie-ish dance moves in there, you know, moving on. Um, we have Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell and I believe also Michael Jackson is in this song, right? Why doesn't it say that anywhere? This song is one of my favorite, like, classic Halloween-y songs. Um, I love it. I love the way that the guy, Rockwell, I guess, I've never heard of him other than this song, but the way that he sings is, like, perfect for, like, a halloween -y song, you know? Um, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, it's the way people sometimes, like, enunciate while they sing that just makes it, like, 
feel Halloween, you know? It's like Danny Elfman does it really well. What do we call this? Do people know things here and can tell me? Danny Elfman is the guy that does the score for a lot of like Tim Burton movies. And I believe he like voices Jack the Skellington, Jack Skellington, the skeleton, Jack Skellington in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, one of my favorite movies, but only the singing, like he doesn't voice the talking, like the dialogue for the character, just the singing, I think. Um, And it's just the perfect like Halloween soundtrack voice, you know? But anyways, I also like this guy's voice. Why do I just talk so much? Okay. Anyways, this song's fun and funny. Lyrics are... Oh my god. No, at some point when he says... Because the whole song he's saying like... I always feel like somebody's watching me. You know? Like he's scared to shower. And he's scared to do this and that. Because he feels like someone's watching him. And then he's like... I wonder who's watching me now. The IRS? I feel like me quoting these songs is not going to be as funny at all as in the song. But um, if you listen to the song, okay, trust me, it's funny. Anyways, next song. Tear You Apart by She Wants Revenge. I don't like the album cover for this song. It like bothers me. But anyways, I don't know anything about this band, She Wants Revenge. I think this is another one that just got like suggested while I was making a Halloween playlist. You get like little suggestions underneath the playlist that you're making of like related songs or whatever. You know, it's just like classic like pop punk or whatever, slightly emo, edgy song. You know, I feel like it fits the vibe, you know, it's a pretty good song. Um, And then we have, dude, something that surprises me as being... um, like something you wouldn't think would go in the Halloween playlist, but I just like wanted to include it is a few different K-pop intros or like interludes. Um, I have a couple NCT like interludes from an album and then also a Luna one. I think that's it, but I don't know. I just like thought of a few that I feel like would fit in a Halloween playlist maybe other people think they're weird and maybe I have too much like instrumental stuff in this playlist um but I don't know a lot of k-pop intros and interludes from from k-pop albums are just like they got them fun spooky vibes you know you just see for yourself let me know if you think I'm crazy or if you also agree um also it's just an excuse for me to put Luna in here who are one of my favorite k-pop groups um anyways we got another kim petrus this one's called i don't want to die that's how she says it in the song um and then super freak by rick james another iconic absolutely iconic halloween classic um my parents have this little skeleton guy who has like a giant head who dances when you press a button and he sings this song and I think it's actually in one of my like old old Halloween videos that I really don't want to address because well I just addressed it but I don't want to like actually watch it myself because it's probably super cringe but um yeah anyways they have a little skeleton guy that sings this song that they take out out from the attic every Halloween season and um it's my favorite Halloween decoration that I ever grew up with as a child. And yeah, this song is just another banger. So anyways, Scary Monsters and Super Creeps by David Bowie. Another one that you just feel like you have to put on here, you know, classic halloween song. It's not my favorite by any means, but it fits the vibe and I generally like it anyways. Um, good Ones by Charlie XCX. This is just another loophole for me to add another artist that I love so much. Um, You know, the lyrics, are they Halloween-y? I don't know, but the video certainly is like Halloween-y. It's like pretty much just at like a funeral. Um, Like the, 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 um, 
the funeral itself, the cemetery service, and also like the reception or whatever, um, feel spooky enough to me. And also I feel like the general sound of it also, is it distinctly Halloween-y? I don't know, but do I feel like it fits into the playlist okay? Sure, yes. Um, some of these songs, it's like you can disagree with me that they should be on the playlist. Um, and I will like respect that, but not this one. Okay, you have to like agree that this one is good in here and that's it. Now we have another icon, Bloody Bloody Mary by Lady Gaga. This is not a loophole though. I genuinely think that this like belongs in here. Feels Halloween-y to me. It's called Bloody Mary. Like, duh, you know? So, um, yeah, a classic from my teens. Um, next, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land. Another from the Marina album that I was talking about earlier that also just gives that, like, retro Hollywood witch vibe, okay? What else can I say? Like, a retro Hollywood actress by day but she's a witch by night that's a movie concept anyways love it um another yeah i have a lot of like just random little interludes from different people's albums i have like i said a couple from some k-pop groups and then i have a couple from childish gambino's album uh something internet i forgot what it's called but yeah, there was like two different like interludes from that album that just give spooky vibes to me, so I added them on here. There's one from a freaking designer album, you know, the guy that did the panda song. Um that is just like I've had it on my Halloween playlist for like 3 years now. It's spooky as hell for for what reason? I don't know. But Moving on, we have People Are Strange by The Doors, another just like classic one that you feel like you have to put on here. Um, I got five on it, Tethered Mix from Us. <laughs> um, yeah, this one, is it a bit much for like a party playlist? Maybe, but I just love it, so it's in here. And also love that movie, kind of want to watch it again. Turn Off the Light, one of my favorites from Kim Petras' album um, featuring Elvira. How do you, is that how you say that? The Halloween icon. Um, she has a little monologue within the song, which is pretty fun. Um, yep. Gangster by Labyrinth, which is part of the soundtrack for Euphoria season one. I love the euphoria soundtrack as did like everyone who watched that show um i personally feel like this song has like a halloweeny vibe to it um especially certain parts of it i don't know how to explain it but like you'll know when you listen to it um there's that luna interlude that i told you about earlier it just has a spooky vibe to me Go listen to your first sister for yourself and let me know. Another Charlie XCX song, Secret, parentheses, shh. Um, this song, the lyrics, I think, are debatably spooky. You know, she's talking about, like, don't tell my secret, you know, like, I don't know. It's, like, a little bit creepy, I guess, or, like, spooky vibes, but... I do think, like, the sound of it has, like, a spookiness to it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Was it an excuse to add a Charlie XCX, XCX song last year? Yes. But do I genuinely think it does work? Also, yes. Next, we have one of a couple EXO songs that I added in here. Is it EXO or X E X O? Let me know if we have any X souls in the chat. Is that what you call it? Not even sure. But, um, you know, I would say I'm a casual fan of them. I don't know too much about them. I don't know all their names or anything. Um, I only know a few songs. But I really like this song called Monster by them. Um, I don't know if I said, but this is a K-pop group for anyone who doesn't know. This one doesn't sound super Halloween-y necessarily, but the title is Monster. 
And in the song, they're talking about, you can call me monster, you know, I'm creeping. So I feel like it gets a pass, you know? It's more, it's more robotic sounding than anything though. But anyways, moving on. Halloween theme dance radio mix. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, what else is there to say? I don't know. Brian Eno by MGMT. Um, I have a couple different MGMT songs in here just because they just feel Halloween-y to me. Again, it's that like Halloween rock. I feel like it's a genre of its own, but there's probably a different name for it. It just feels like Halloween to me, and so that's what I'm calling it. But anyways, I also just really like the song, so it's an excuse to put it in here. Um, also, the lyrics seem somewhat spooky-ish. I can't even remember any of them right now, but I think they're creepy. <laughs> anyways, next, here's that designer interlude. It's a literally called Interlude 2. Wow, I don't even know what Interlude 1 is. Maybe I should listen to it. Maybe it's even more spooky than this one. But, yep. Next, Criminal by Taemin, dude. One of the K-pop songs that I added into here that fits the most <laughs> out of the K-pop songs that I added this year. I found Shiny, the group that Taemin is in, and also Taemin as a soloist this year. And I'm a huge shiny fan now, a shawl, if you will. But um, yeah, Taemin, once I saw Taemin's most recent releases, aka Criminal and Idea, they both have like a spooky vibe to them, like kind of creepy, dark edginess, you know? And I knew I had found one of my new favorite artists. Um, I love, especially Criminal. Please, dude. Maybe I should link it below to make sure that you watch the right performance. I'm like getting hot right now. So if my face is getting red, um, it's not for any reason other than I'm just like getting hot. So I'm taking off my thick ass socks. But anyways, um, yeah, if I could get you to watch like any K-pop performance right now, I would really suggest to watch Criminal by Taemin. Um... I'll have to link the performance below because the set, it's one of my favorite sets for a performance I've ever seen in my life. It's so fucking sick. Um, also, he goes from the song Criminal and it looks like he's in hell straight into the song Idea where it looks like he's in heaven and I just think that's sick as hell. Um, but Criminal is like one of my favorite K-pop choreographies. It's so cool. Um... That's all I have to say, but I feel like the vibe of the song and the sounds, the lyrics, whatever, feels spooky to me, so I feel like it fit in here well. Um, next, we have A Nightmare on My Street by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Um, this is one that I feel like a lot of people would skip <laughs> while playing this playlist because it's a little annoying. It's very cheesy and somewhat cringe, but the lyrics are so funny. Um it's it's just you have i just have to put it in here so that everyone hears it at least once you know even if you skip it every time it comes on because you'd rather hear other songs um just the fact that you heard it once is important to me um another one by kim petrus moving on another one by kim petrus moving on um thriller by michael jackson you know michael jackson makes me feel gross to still listen to so i almost want to just take the song off because do we really need thriller on a halloween playlist in 2021 like have we not heard it enough i don't know comment down below but for now it's in here <laughs> black magic woman by santana another classic um classic halloween witchy song I really, the classic Halloween songs, I don't know what else to say about them, okay? Little Dark Age by MGMT. This is the other MGMT song that I mentioned. This one, 
I can't even think of what the lyrics are or anything like that, but it does set it. The sound is spooky. And also if you watch the video, the video feels very like Halloween-y. So it's definitely in here. Next EXO song or EXO, not sure. Um, Obsession. This song, I don't know necessarily that the lyric, it's like the opposite of Monster because I feel like Monster, the lyrics and title are more Halloween, but the actual sound of it is less. This song, I feel like, has, like, a kind of creepy sound to it, but I don't know if necessarily necessarily the lyrics are, like, spooky or anything. I think it's just, like, classic toxic relationship lyrics. But this, I don't know a lot of EXO, EXO songs or music videos. I've only watched a few, but I love the music video for this song. It's so cool looking. The visuals are just, like, amazing. Um, I love the way they styled each of them, especially Kai. He looks sick as hell in this music video. Um, the choreo is cool. I don't know. They feel like Marvel villains or something. It's just cool. So anyways, I should watch that again because I feel like I've only watched it like once, but that's how you know it made an impact on me. Okay. Next, we have a couple songs by Poppy. I don't know if you guys remember Poppy um on youtube she's just a little freakish girl who made some weird youtube videos she makes music also and she has a lot of good music actually but a lot of it's like metal ish metal slash pop slash techno slash rock i don't know there's a lot going on there but this song is by poppy and diplo and it's called time is up and it's literally about like global warming um which i feel like is the spookiest of all, you know? So, yeah, what else is there to say? The lyrics are really good. You should listen to it. Now we have Devil by Slater. Um, This song, I really considered taking off just because, like, it doesn't necessarily sound Halloween-y much, you know? But I feel like, okay, the title is Devil. And I feel like the lyrics are pretty, like, dark or whatever so it's on here for now you know you you guys can debate in the comments if anyone even freaking comments on this video um what songs you think i should sacrifice if any but moving on take my breath by the weekend honestly i just like the weekend's music so i found an excuse to put some weekend on here this song i feel like it's just like it fits decently into the playlist and also i don't know something about weekend's whole like discography most of his songs just have like a vaguely eerie vibe to them do you know what i mean like there's something spooky about all of his songs i feel like it's just there's always like some danger afoot do you know what i mean like someone's always like maybe gonna die do you know what i mean tell me if you agree but i just feel like his songs like the sound the lyrics the music videos that he has for a lot of his songs he just has like a lot of themes of like spookiness i mean i'm not wrong i guess considering his fucking halftime show um you could just tell he likes like a horror vibe and he does it really well so anyways it's called take my breath i mean that's spooky right (laughs) okay there will be blood another kim petras classic okay next we have no one lives forever by oingo boingo i have a couple songs by oingo boingo um the band that features danny elfman who i was just talking about as the singer uh also voice of jack skellington in nightmare before christmas my mouth is getting dry so i'm sipping water Just more classic Halloween vibes. Not much to say. It's called No One Lives Forever. I mean, come on. The album art is literally a bunch of skeletons having a party. Um, Now we have another Poppy. This one's called Meat. This one I debated leaving on this playlist just because um, I don't know how like distinctly Halloween it is, but it's talking about like 
eating the meat off of her bones, I think, or something like that, right? So like zombies, I'm thinking, or I don't know, anything else, werewolves. Okay, uh, next, Living Dead Boy, another Graveyard Guy song. Um, it's, you know, it's called Living Dead Boy. What, what else is there to say? Now we have the second k-pop song titled monster in this playlist which arguably fits in here better um this one's by red velvet members irene and sulgi i'm not sure how to say that um so someone please correct me sulgi or solgi um oh maybe it's solgi it's uh whatever let me know (laughs) not whatever but you know let me know if you're a red velvet fan this is a sick song it's called monster and they go, I'm a little monster. And it always makes me think of like, this is, this should be like the, um, the theme song of like Lady Gaga fans, you know, they're called little monsters. Anyways, fun song, fun choreo. It has a spooky vibe. It's called monster. That's all I'll say. We got another interlude. Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Another classic. Um, ba 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 superstitious um in the next life another kim petrus classic next another k-pop song in the morning aka mafia by itsy um this is another k-pop performance that i would really recommend or just watch the music video honestly i think the music video i think the music video for this song showcases the choreography better than a lot of other k-pop music videos do i love this music video and i love the song it's like so entertaining to me it's it's so it feels so random i don't know like why are they the mafia why are these young women the mafia makes you think you know no but seriously i love i love it it's just a fun song and it definitely has a spooky vibe you know at one point they share evil laughter so and i put the english version in here i don't know if i should have i actually like the korean version better um sound wise but i feel kind of like the english version i mean for like english listeners which is what i think most of my audience is obviously um it feels more spooky when you can actually know what they're saying. You know what I mean? But anyways, another Franz Ferdinand song. This one is also feels spooky to me, although Evil Eye feels somewhat more spooky. But Season of the... I'm trying to like kind of hurry up so I don't take four hours. Season of the Witch cover by Lana Del Rey for the movie Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. You know... I'm certainly no longer a Lana Del Rey fan. She really irritates me. Um, She kind of has for quite some time, but COVID season, she really just just went downhill. But um, her voice is still beautiful, and I still like this cover. I have two Lana Del Rey covers in here that are both good spooky fun. Um, Also, I'd recommend that movie if you want, like, a family-friendly but genuinely spooky movie. It's a good one. Um, super massive, super massive black hole by the by Muse. Whoa, they're not the Muse. They're just Muse. Okay. Um, from Twilight. Yes, I did include a Twilight soundtrack song in here. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. Another weekend song, which is it justified? I don't know. After Hours by The Weeknd. I think it has a spooky vibe. Another one that I debated on putting because I feel like it takes a little long to get started, but I just love this song, so it's in here for now. The Stranger Things theme, which I feel like is one of my favorite spooky themes. It's just cool. Um, The song UFO by Strange Names. I don't know how Halloween-y it sounds, but it is about aliens and... They say UFO and we are the little green men. And also there's like a monologue in the song of like a girl talking about a UFO sighting and it's pretty cute and fun. I don't know. 
So there's that song. Ghostbusters by Ray Parker Jr., the theme song. The theme song, Ghostbusters. Um, This is iconic. Uh, one of the best theme songs that there is out there. I've never seen a Ghostbusters movie, and I don't really feel the need to anytime soon. But love this theme song. Um, Love the fact that he actually said, Bustin' makes me feel good in this theme song. I I cannot believe that, um, but it is iconic for that. Next, we have Teenagers by My Chemical Romance. This song is really making the rounds right now on TikTok and Instagram reels. Um, I really wanted to include a Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, a My Chemical Romance song because um, I feel like very clearly they give spooky vibes, obviously, um, but... I didn't know which one would feel the most, like, appropriate for, like, a Halloween party playlist, you know? I could add, like, Welcome to the Black Parade, a classic, a favorite of everyone, but I feel like maybe it's a little too... I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what the word would be, but anyways, I just thought this one fit best. The, The upbeat nature of it active um i don't know (laughs) painting a hole by the shins i put a couple shin songs in here from the album head heart 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 what the fuck does that say heartworms heartworms that's what it says um i don't know they feel a little bit spooky and there's a skeleton on the cover i like the shins um and i liked these songs so they're in here um boo bitch by kim petras another k-pop inclusion this one's called gimme gimme by nct 127 um i am shamefully a fan of nct 127 you know i have like a hate love relationship with them you could say um when i first started hearing their music let's see the the journey that i went on with nct's music in general and nct 127 this is going to be so confusing for people who don't know anything about k-pop but nct the group the cinematic universe whatever um whenever i would find a new song by them my brain would go not these fuck boys again and um then i'd give it a couple more listens you know it keep showing up for me it keep getting recommended to me the algorithm was relentless and then all of a sudden i'm like wait a fucking minute this is a bop this is a banger this is a classic um and long story short now i'm a huge fan (laughs) a huge fan i don't know i still think they're like okay i'm talking way too much about individual songs but this song's reason for being included in here um what's scarier than a bunch of fuck boys no but actually i do love this song um it's weirdly catchy I do think it has a spooky vibe. They also say like dead clowns for whatever reason. I don't understand why how it fits into the lyrics. But I just feel like the concept in itself is very like haunted fuckboy. If that makes sense. Watch the video. Um, listen to the song. I feel like you'll agree with me. Anyways, we have another one that is somewhat unjustified. Lay All Your Love On Me by ABBA. You know, I just love ABBA. Is it ABBA or ABBA? I I hear it both ways and I feel bad that I call myself such a big fan and I don't even know. But um, don't question it. This song fits in here. Okay, I could see it in a horror movie, and I honestly really want a horror movie with, like, ABBA songs as a soundtrack. Please, like, I would love that so much. Like, Mamma Mia, but, like, horror. Um, Next, we have the Suspiria theme, the original one. I haven't seen either of these movies, and I feel like I really should. 
Um, this theme is like super spooky. <laughs> Next, another Oingo Boingo, Dead Man's Party. It's a dead man's party. Ba-na-na. Okay, I don't know it as well as I thought I did, but it's fun. Good Halloween fun. Bloody Valentine by Kim Petras. Nothing to say. In the Room Where You Sleep by Dead Man's Bones. Featuring the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music Children's Choir. There's a children's choir in this. Interesting. Okay, yeah, another spooky song. I don't know what to say. I think this is another one that just like got suggested to me. Like, I don't know who these people are. But I was like, sick. I'll add it to my playlist. Um, Knives by Kim Petras. They just don't stop. The Kim Petras songs, I mean. Half Moon River. This is a little interlude from the Over the Garden Wall soundtrack that I was just talking about an hour and a half ago. (laughs) Um, This soundtrack is lovely. I feel like most of the songs on it, though... I wouldn't put them, like, in this playlist, you know? They're just cute while you're, like, watching the actual show. But I liked the, like, little interludes that they had in the soundtrack, so I added them to this playlist. I feel like they just continue the spooky theme of the playlist. And, mm mm-hmm. Next, I have a couple Billie Eilish songs on here, just because, I don't know she has some good music i'm not a huge billy eilish fan but obviously she has like a spooky vibe to a lot of her songs i i have bury a friend on here and also well we'll get to it i don't have to remember i guess it'll come up tell me it's a nightmare tell me it's a nightmare by kim petras who dat boy by tyler the creator and asap rocky um another one that like I always debate deleting from this playlist just because it does take a long time to get started, but it's definite spooky vibes and I just love this song, so it's in here. Um, Goddess Sedae. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, It's by BY, the K-pop rapper who I've only heard a few songs by, but I should look into more songs because I really like his songs. Um... I don't know what this song is about because it's mostly in Korean, but it sounds spooky. Okay, so it's in here. Um, Heaven by The Neighborhood. It has spooky vibes. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking when there's not really much to say. Um, Who Is She by I Monster. This is another one that just was recommended to me and I was like, ooh, this is creepy. Add to playlist. Massacre by Kim Petras, You're Dead by Norma Tanega. Um, this is the soundtrack, the theme song, opening song, whatever, to the movie and the show, What We Do in the Shadows. I have only watched a little bit of the show. I don't know if I would recommend it. It's like funny, but I didn't like love it. But the movie... I 100% recommend to everyone out there. It's a mockumentary um, made by and also starring Jemaine Clement from Flight of the Concords and a lot of other things. And then also Taika Waititi, which you guys probably know from like Thor Ragnarok and other things. But um, they like co-direct it and co-star in it. And it's a mockumentary about vampires in New Zealand that are roommates. Um, It's really funny. And everyone should watch it. Anyways, this is the theme song for that movie. And the show that they created related to it. Spinoff, whatever. Um, I Put a Spell on You. I wanted to put like some version of this song on here and i felt like this one i don't know i just found it from the sabrina soundtrack uh and i felt like it was like interesting and it was a little more like fun sounding than certain other versions i guess or like fresh i guess sometimes i get like sick of like older songs that I hear every year and that are in like a lot of movies and stuff and so I like look for random like covers of them 
to like refresh them in my brain, you know? Anyways, Demons by Kim Petras, another Taman song, Impressionable. Um, I don't know how much the lyrics are spooky, but it just sounds super spooky. And someone made a comment that this song sounds like he's like a spider, like trapping someone in his web. Like that's what they imagine when they hear the song. And, and I feel like it encapsulated it very well for me and also explains why the song is in here. It just got a good spooky vibe. One of my favorite Taman songs. Anyways, next, the Billie Eilish song, You Should See Me in a Crown. Um, yeah, well, I just zoned out for a second watching the fucking spider on the screen. But um, yeah, it's spooky. Dead Alive, the other Shin song I was talking about. The Journey Begins, another interlude from the Over the Garden Wall soundtrack. Once Upon a Dream from Maleficent, the other Lana Del Rey cover I mentioned. Oops, what did I just click? Witchy Woman by The Eagles, another classic. Witchy Woman. Um, the other Childish Gambino interlude that is literally like one second long. Um... Witch by The Bird and the Bee. This one's a little bit like slow. I feel like for like a Halloween party soundtrack, but you know, any song that like is about a witch, I feel like I have to add it. I just love witches. Um, are, I think we're like basically done. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I can stop talking for hours and hours. Oh, we still have the honorable mentions though. <clears throat> what did I say? I need to increase my watch hours. Okay, I had to put something from Squid Game, okay? I loved the score for that show, and this is, like, the most, like, iconic as part of the soundtrack, I guess, like, what you guys would, like, remember the most. Um, it's just called Pink Soldiers, which I think is kind of fun, um, but it's that, like, oh, he, oh, I can't think of how it goes because I'm listening to music, literally, but it's the, you know you'll know when you hear it okay it's perfectly spooky and it's short enough that it doesn't feel too weird in this playlist you know um although i will say also my other favorite part of the score for that show that would not fit in this playlist but i just thought was like amazing is if you watch the show uh i don't think this is really a spoiler it's pretty like basic knowledge of the show but if you don't want to hear just like skip ahead like a little bit but when they lower the um piggy bank with the money in it i loved how they did that so much the way they like dimmed all the lights and like lowered the piggy bank and it has like this like fancy lighting on it and they play like this video game music all of a sudden while they're like um putting the money in the piggy bank i don't know it just felt so like wrong and like disrespectful it added to this like just disturbing disturbingness of the show so well and also just on its own the like techno-y arcade music that they played is just like cool but like the like uncomfortable tone shift in that scene where they like first reveal the money being put in the piggy bank. Oh, it's just so good. Anyways, the last song on here is just the other over the garden wall interlude that I included in here. And that's it. Ooh, so fun. Tell me if you guys thought that was fun. Cause I can do a Christmas one when, it, when I have a Christmas playlist. Um, or just talk about music. If you guys like to talk about music, but I wrote down a few honorable mentions on a tiny piece of paper. Let me, um, honorable mentions for my halloween -y playlist. We have the third EXO song <laughs> called Mama. Um, EXO stands might hate me for this. Um, I'm not a hater, okay? I love this song and music video, 
I don't know if this is like their debut song or what. They just look really young. But okay. EXO is cool. They have cool songs, you know, they're a cool K pop boy group. They're like, you know, masculine or whatever. They have, they can be tough, okay? So and I don't want to like misrepresent them. People get mad at me. But I, when I discovered the music video um, and performance and song and everything for Mama by EXO, um, I was like dying of laughter and just amazement. And I had to show my roommate and friend Casey. And then we were together dying of laughter and amazement together. It is just so much happening. Um, and it just doesn't stop. Like you think that you've seen it all and then you haven't. And it's just a good, it's just a ride. Okay, I would recommend it for a good time. Anyways, I'm just saying, like, I would love to add that song for laughs because it does have, like, a spooky vibe. <laughs> but I think it's a little much. But I just... After I saw that music video, I could not stop going, Mama. 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 Um, yeah, Mama means your highness i think in korean for anyone who doesn't understand i had to look that up because i was i was like i know there's a reason why they're saying mama they wouldn't just say mama as in like mom so anyways um also set the song seven devils by florence and the machines for the same reason as my body is a cage by arcade fire both those songs are like really good like spooky vibes the lyrics have spooky vibes to them you know but they're just a little like slow or like slow to get started or they have like a certain amount of like emptiness in the song to where I just don't think they're like as good for like a Halloween party playlist but more just like appreciating as art on your own you know what I mean um but it's a cool song and then we have Dark Lady by Cher I found this song like a year ago or whatever and I was like oh my god this song is so cool like it's has like witchy vibes you know um it's about her literally like killing a lady who is cheating on her husband her cheating on a lady who her husband is cheating on her with um who is also like her mm, what's it called fortune teller or whatever anyways it's like a cool song i like the sound and generally the lyrics and stuff love share you know but she says gypsy a lot and since then we've learned that that's a slur um so i don't know if i should be like saying it i don't think it's like i mean i'm not like saying it as in like calling someone it but anyways she says that i think if i said the g word most of you guys wouldn't know what i'm even saying but anyways she calls the lady that word and um like a lot and clearly in like a derogatory way and it feels cringe now i mean i'm sure like share if you brought it up to her now would apologize i feel like i don't know would she i don't know but anyways it just makes me uncomfortable to like add it to a playlist and like keep listening to it now because it just makes me cringe to hear that now knowing that it's like a slur you know um anyways another song concrete by poppy this song is so iconic um another song that is a journey to listen to it definitely has creepy vibes to it honestly i feel like i could add it and people would agree with me but i already had two other poppy songs that i felt like fit better but this song um just listen to it it's a journey that's all i'll say yeah <laughs> and then a couple k-pop songs that i wanted to add but didn't the song lucifer by shiny i would love to add a shiny song i was just talking about how much i love them but you know they actually have 
Shiny has a song called Why So Serious that's literally about zombies coming back to life through love, which is literally the plot of Warm Bodies. But um, you wouldn't really know that if you're not a Korean speaker. You know what I mean? Like listening to it as an as a non-Korean person um, or non-Korean language speaker. It doesn't really sound spooky and the English lyrics that are in the song don't really give away like the story that's happening. So unfortunately, I didn't feel like putting it in the playlist, but it's still a fun song anyways. And then also they have a song called Married to the Music that the video is very like Halloween-y. The performances are so cute and Halloween-y. I would really recommend them also. This is just K-pop propaganda. I'm sorry, but... The performances for Married to the Music are very fun and very clearly Halloween-y, but the song itself, like, doesn't really sound Halloween-y at all. And the lyrics don't even either. So, um... So, yeah, it's not on here, but it's something that I'm sad about. But they do have a song called Lucifer, which, you know, Lucifer, that's the devil. That's spooky. But the song doesn't really sound Halloween-y to me. But goddamn, that is a bop. That is one of my favorite Shiny songs. And I was not a Shiny fan. I had no idea who they were at the time this song came out. But I can feel the nostalgia for the trends of that time while I watch that video and while I listen to the song. Oh my god. So good. Next we have... (laughs) Um, the song Because by Dreamcatcher. I love the group Dreamcatcher. I really wanted to add a song by them because I feel like they have a lot of like spooky mm, aesthetics over the year. Like they have a lot of like goth stuff going on. But for whatever reason, I couldn't find a song that really I felt like fit in the playlist well. But the one that I did want to add, but then I changed my mind on it was Because it's i think it's like about them like a girl wanting to like kill her boyfriend or something (laughs) i don't know that's what i get from it but like the whole choreo and stuff they're like it's like they're dolls or something or at least like aspects of it they feel like they're like dolls like creepy dolls um but the song itself i don't know i just felt like it didn't really fit on a halloween playlist but I included it as an honorable mention because there's like creepy elements to it and they feel like creepy dolls in the choreography performances. So anyways, that's my last bit of information to share and I am now finished with this episode of the podcast. Please let me know your thoughts on this episode, you know? Mm, was it fun do you like the halloween playlist what did you find any new songs through it that you like did you find any new songs through it that you don't like feel free to let me know did you watch any of the videos that i recommended (laughs) did i just like spit something or blow something okay anyways Thank you so much for listening. I had fun. Um, hope you did too. And I hope you are having fun getting ready for the Halloween season or mm, experiencing the Halloween season because we're literally in it. Oh my god, we're halfway through October. What the fuck happened? I feel like I am not prepared at all. Oh no. But whatever. Um, I will see you guys later. Leave in the comments if you have any ideas for my next podcast episode. But yeah. Eat well. Sleep well. Talk to a friend. Hug someone. Unless you don't like hugs. (laughs) Okay, bye.